Thank you so much. I think it's, it's fascinating to see uh, the opportunities. Um, there's so many natural opportunities for collaboration between different sectors in education. And if we think just about health, there's so many, um, you know, if you think about chronic absenteeism, we think about school health delivery, nutrition, wash, there's so much that can be shared and uh, so much good work that's happening as well. So um, for everyone online, we're just going to take a moment ourselves to have a stretch because after lunch, the blood goes from brain and starts to help the, the tummy. So everyone online, please stand up from your own chairs and take a walk around and have a stretch. And everyone inside, can you also do the same? Can we stand, please? So everyone online, you, you have to take care of yourself for your stretch. Everyone in the room, you can just stand for me. And then you can stretch the hands up as far as you can, really high. And maybe just want to like, get that stretch in. Take a deep breath. Belly out as you breathe. And bring it down. And you can even do a little bit more left to right, whatever you want. <laughs> Kick yourself open. Take as much of a stretch as you want. Those online, I hope you're stretching. And then you can have a seat. <laughs> Usually I would do even more stretching, but for now that will be a quick one. Because we only have one more presentation left. It's really exciting as well. And then we'll open for a quick round of uh, Q&A, questions and some answers, maybe some comments online. Please feel free to, to share your questions. So our very final presentation, and Monica, you have met and she can come up. There are so many natural opportunities for collaboration and tomorrow we'll see a little bit more. But today, Monica will share with us some of the concrete work taking the ideas and the, and the opportunities into practice. So actually having joint implementation plans, joint objectives between two sectors. So please welcome Monica. Thank you very much, uh, Sophia, and the previous speakers for really highlighting the importance of working together uh, across the different sectors. So I know we are all tired. Uh, I'll just <laughs> briefly take us through a use case where we have uh, worked together with the health sector um, to really leverage the system and see how we can respond to the COVID crisis. So this is a case of implementing school-based health surveillance in Uganda. So um, I think all of us are still, still have the fresh memories of, of COVID, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, one of the things that this pandemic did, uh, if you can see Uganda, I think sometimes we are always in the news for wrong reasons, but uh, some of these news articles highlight how we were closed the longest. So in Uganda, the government closed the schools for two years. So we closed on March 31st, 2020, and opened in 2022. So you can imagine what the impact of that did to the children who were learning. It actually reversed the gains in learning that had been gained over the, the long period of time. So um, of course, during the pandemic, it started by teachers having um, uh, teachers trying to, to improvise and teach learners maybe in their homes and try to keep the learning going. But along the way, of course, there were so many learners that got disinterested. Some did not have access to online materials or self-study materials that the government was providing. And in that, they engaged in other economic activities, supported their parents to try and make ends meet. And then there was a surge of child mothers in Uganda because we recorded one of the highest um, periods where we had the highest numbers of teenage mothers. And of course, with that, um, some of these learners really dropped out of school. So after the two years of COVID and lockdown, there was need to reopen schools. So what did that mean? 
uh, initially what we did uh, leveraging on the system because we had already started implementing DHIS2 for education was to work with the ministry to do a national data call to inform the COVID response. Uh, of course, previously the ministry had, um, had halted the annual school census uh, in 2017. So between 2017 and 2020, we didn't have any updated education data to inform the COVID response. So using the DHIS2, we quickly customized the system to collect data on key indicators on enrollment, on teachers, on the infrastructure back uh, at school to inform really distribution of self-study materials. And once schools reopened, we were able to see how many more desks do we need to ensure that we have the social distancing, how many masks, how, how many hand washing facilities should we uh, supply to schools based on the enrollment numbers. So of course with that, when, when schools reopened, there was also a surge of pupils coming back to school. So we needed to plan for, for, for those pupils. Uh, so after, you know, uh, leveraging the system to, 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 to respond to the COVID, then uh, we needed to ask ourselves, how are we going to maintain the safety of these learners while in school? It was important that once learners come back to school, then they are safe or they don't contract COVID and then again miss learning or dropping out of school. So. Um, Actually, working with Save the Children, this uh, was one of the key um, partners in implementing DHIS2 for education. It was their maiden idea of how do we ensure that these school, these learners are safe in school. So we still leverage the system to see how we can implement a low-cost school-based surveillance and reporting system to allow early identification of the learners that maybe had um, these uh, uh, symptoms of COVID, how do we refer these learners, and those that were tested positive because along the way we also started testing in schools, how do we manage them within the school system, and also put in place preventive measures to minimize the transmission. So, and um, the system was really low cost because it was using SMS-based reporting at no cost. And at this point, we leveraged uh, the existing reporting structures uh, within the healthcare system. And um, uh, Uganda has been well known for really managing disease outbreaks because we have, uh, we've had Ebola epidemic before and so we've really had a very good system that uh, uh, monitors and responds to these epidemics. So we leverage that national disease surveillance system in health to use that same platform to report, in, uh, to report on these cases in schools. Then we had these nice um, real-time custom dashboards that were also being used in the health sector initially, but now we adopted that to report on school-based uh, surveillance. And it was real-time, you could easily see how many cases of uh, COVID have we registered at school, how many have, have been tested positive, how many have been referred, so that immediate action is, um, is done. So what I really want to highlight from this story is that cross-sectoral implementation approach, the partnerships with the existing uh, partners in the country in order to make this a success. So it was, of course, in affecting both health and education. And not only health and education, even, you know, nutrition, wash, and all these partners had to come together and see how do we respond to this pandemic. So with that, we had actually um, an official launch of the school-based surveillance system with, together with the Honorable Minister of State for Education. And we had partners, both health and education, health um, ministries and also Ministry of Education jointly working together to support this implementation. So through that, we established uh, a, what we call school-based surveillance task force at the central level that included all these different partners. And that task force was really tasked with um, 
you're not managing the whole implementation from uh, ensuring that the tools were harmonized, they were customized into the system, they were mobilizing resources and planning together, they were training down the district level and um, the school level. So it was really a joint effort. So, um, and the trainings were kind of like cascade. And of course, through that task force, we had a national training of trainers. But when we went to the region and district level, we leveraged the existing health we leveraged the existing health structures because in the health sector we had the district biostatisticians that were supporting the system in health. So they were able to transfer this knowledge to the education teams to quickly register the school health teams um, who are responsible for reporting into the system. So there's that knowledge sharing and support at the district level. And even the school level trainings were jointly done by both the district education and health teams. So uh, I think that really showed the power of how we can leverage this uh, system and also work together across sectors to really respond to the same cause. Yeah, so we had the different responsibilities, you know, at the central level coordination committee, the education development partners, they were really pivotal in, you know, mobilizing resources. And instead of each partner working in silos, because you'd have like Save the Children supporting education and UNICEF supporting health, yet all of them are acting in the same school. So all these resources were optimized at the national level and then we had um, coordinated um, regional implementations. Then also responsibilities for the district teams that included both health and education. So uh, after COVID, then what? Because we asked ourselves, and this was a question I think of the school-based task force. So yes, we've been monitoring COVID, it's been successful, now COVID is over, but then it really brought an awareness of the need to you know, extend this beyond COVID and make it routine health surveillance in schools. So we've actually in uh, 2022, we had an outbreak of Ebola. And some schools were really affected because some learners were in school. So how do we monitor that? How do we adapt the system? So we decided to make uh, the system more generic to collect all data on all other diseases of public health concern, uh, Ebola outbreak, measles outbreak. We've also had a yellow fever outbreak recently. I think there's already a campaign that is ongoing. So all that now has been standardized into a data collection tool that incorporates all these different um, symptoms. And then we've also formed um, that task force has been incorporated into the school health technical working group, which is still um, part of, represented by both the Ministry of Health and Education. And then there's still ongoing joint collaboration, planning and response by all these different partners. So we hope that with this, I think we shall go a long way to improving school health uh, in the country. Thank you very much.